Hello, I'm talking to Roxandra Ratio at the Citizenship Foundation in London. Uh, Mrs. Ratio, you are the International Projects Manager at the Citizenship Foundation. And could you explain how citizenship education became a part of the secondary school curricula in England and what role the Citizenship Foundation played in this process? Okay, citizenship became a part of the curriculum uh, in the UK in 2002. And this was a result of a process of lobbying the government to introduce this subject into the curriculum that lasted for quite a few years. In 1997, um, the Labour came into power into the UK and there were quite a few politicians that were interested in introducing citizenship education in the curriculum. Uh, but before 1997, there were also quite a lot of individuals and organizations that were lobbying the government and they were producing research and uh, work on citizenship education. So Citizenship Foundation is one of the organizations that was involved in lobbying the government um, in introducing this subject into the curriculum, which happened in 2002, as I said. And Citizenship Foundation's projects and resources are being used by schools at the moment to help them deliver uh, the citizenship curriculum. In different European countries, different concepts of citizenship education have been developed and uh, quite different terminology is used. For instance, uh, terms like civic education, civics, political education, democratic citizenship education, etc. Could you outline what are the main elements and aims of the English citizenship education curriculum? So basically the main idea for the citizenship curriculum is to educate young people and equip them with the knowledge, skills and understanding to play an effective role in public life. And this ranges from getting young people to understand and learn about their rights, responsibilities, duties and freedoms, about law, society and democracy, to also uh, help them have an active role in their life, of uh, their schools, their neighborhoods, their communities, wider society. And also get them to take part in topical and controversial issues and engage in discussions and debate. And at Citizenship Foundation, our projects and resources actually are tailored around this and help schools really um, a lot to deliver the curriculum. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Citizenship Foundation is an independent private charity in the UK. How would you describe the roles and the cooperation of private and public stakeholders in the field of citizenship education? Um, so, for example, do you mean as in funders? Or yeah, like um, I think there is a division of tasks and uh, different roles private and public authorities play in delivering citizenship education. Okay, so our role as a private entity, you, okay, so the Citizenship Foundation's role is to, well, to work with uh, other organizations in partnership um, to uh, deliver citizenship education and also to lobby the government for, uh, well, it was for the introduction of Citizenship Foundation, but we also uh, contribute, like the government releases uh, consultation papers quite often now, so we are uh, quite often involved with other organizations into responding to consultations that come from the government in terms of education and citizenship education, so that's the cooperation there. and. I think our role is to really support schools into the, the delivery of citizenship education and also, uh, yeah, just work with other organizations on this as well. Mm -hmm. uh, as an international projects manager, where do you see the main challenges and benefits of European cooperation between institutions working in the field of citizenship education? Mm -hmm. I think the benefits are in learning from other organizations and from other countries and what they do in other countries in terms of citizenship education, what, what's the approach of other organizations in other countries to this education. So the benefits is about learning and widening your learning and experience from other people. And the challenges are, well I guess because the European Union doesn't really have uh, a say as much as it has in other areas in education. Um, I think sometimes it's not so easy to find cooperation and cooperation ways and 
so many organizations that are involved in working in this field. Yeah, I think that's the challenge. Mm -hmm.